general, what open data and data sharing means is that your data are somewhere online. That is, I think basically anyone could agree on that and you have varying degrees in that. I think ideally data sharing should mean uh, that your raw data is somewhere in a stable online repository. And with raw data, I mean like the data, like the first time you got it in, like basically the Excel sheet you download from the internet plus some code to clean it and the actual clean data file. If that is all online, that would be ideal. And if it would be accompanied by the code you use to analyze that data, um, maybe even a pre-registration of how to collect these data, that would be even better. But I think data sharing in general is that your data somewhere online. One of the immediate advantages of sharing your raw data is that meta-analysis becomes a whole lot easier because as a meta-analyst, you're relying on information that people put in their papers. It's often not the type of data that you need for your meta-analysis because you need, for instance, correlations between variables that the original authors didn't report because it didn't matter for their study, for instance. Also, it's really nice for exploratory analyses, especially in this era of big data. There's so much information in a single data set and yeah, original authors probably have a couple of hypotheses to test it, but there's still so much information in there. I also do think that there are a lot of problems in psychology that open data could help solving. So uh, the first one would be to help um, checking how robust some results are for slightly different choice of analyses. Like we have so much flexibility in the way we analyze our data um, that it can matter a lot whether you include or exclude a, a single covariate, for instance. And it's really informative to know how much a key result hinges on a seemingly unimportant covariate. So the flexibility in data analysis is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just nice if things are disclosed and you know what is important in this flexibility. Um, but it's also nice if you can correct errors. I mean, it's just really easy to slip up somewhere and mis mistype something or click on something wrong and make an error. I also think it should prevent these errors from even occurring. Because if you think about it, if you have to prepare a data set and you know that someone might look at it and might use it again, you'll probably make an extra effort to make sure that it looks nice, that it's understandable. You may rerun the analysis to make sure that the numbers in your paper are correct, um, which probably already solves a lot of these tiny mistakes that you could make. Also be a little bit more careful in the type of conclusions you draw. And in the very, very worst case, I also hope that if data sharing is sort of a requirement that, um, that, you, that you don't fake your data because you know that your data will be out there and it's really hard to create a convincing fake data set, I think. I think slowly people are starting to realize that open data is a very important aspect of science. I've heard about funders actually starting to require that data are publicly available or at least to some extent publicly available. Journals start to encourage open data in very straightforward ways. So Psych Science is actually just basically giving you a sticker when you post your data online and it sounds it sounds almost childish, but it works so well. I think Mallory Kidwell and her colleagues found that after this batch system was implemented, open data really skyrocketed. The best thing that they found was that it wasn't only more often available, but also of much higher quality, and it was the relevant data, and it was findable and reusable. So that was a really good sign. Like the typical psychological experimental data I don't see any reason why it should not always be open, but I do also think that there are cases in which it's just very difficult or impossible to publicly share your data. So in those cases, it would be nice that people actually archive their data as if they would share it publicly, but it's somewhere behind a password. Uh, or something similar. Another thing you could do then actually is also try to anonymize your data. There, there are more and more sophisticated ways to do that. Another objection to it is it was so difficult to collect this and now another person can just walk away with it after all that I've done. So solutions that that could be that you um, sort of uh, release it under embargo. So for instance, you have a, a two, three year period or you name it in which you are the only one who owns it, so you can write all the papers that you want about those data and then release it after this certain time period. It's, it's kind of scary um, to some extent to, to sort of post everything online. You feel a bit naked. It's sort of like, this is exactly what I've done in detail. I'm not 100% sure if this is the best way to analyze things, if my script is completely flawless, if the data are collected in a way that people can understand it. But when I did this with a very large project, I used uh, the, the free tool StatCheck to uh, check a lot of articles for reporting errors and we put everything online. 
And then people got were really positive in the sense that they could reuse it. And it's a, such a large data set. It's, it's over a quarter million p-values from articles, and we just check them for reporting inconsistencies, but there are a million other things you could do with it. So it's also really nice that it's there and people can use it because otherwise I would also feel very responsible to do that all personally because I know that this information is in there and now I know that the community can take advantage of it. <laughs>